All right, the death of Fidel Castro could possibly threaten U.S.-Cuban relations just as tensions were beginning to thaw. This as President-elect Donald Trump has threatened to undo President Obama's efforts to bring the two governments closer together. Joining me now to discuss, uh, Helen Ferre, the director of Hispanic Communications for the Republican National Committee, and Maria Cardona, CNN political commentator and Democratic strategist. Uh, good to see both of you. Hey, Fred. So, Thank you. Thank Helen, you. let me begin with you because we just heard from Ellen Gonzalez praising Castro, but many Cubans and Cuban Americans uh, sharply uh, disagree, or really mostly Cuban Americans sharply disagreeing audibly now. So, uh, do you think Castro's death um, will change the direction um, that we've seen thus far in the past year and a half with the Obama administration? Will it change under um, the direction of a President Donald Trump? Well, thank you, Frederica, for the opportunity to speak today. And one of the things that we see here in Miami, and I was on Calle Ocho, Southwest A Street yesterday for many, many hours, and it was a bittersweet moment where, you know, you're happy for the dawn of a new era, the possibility of democracy perhaps having an opportunity to flow, but at the same time sad that there was, you know, the price after 57 years of a brutal dictatorship that there's been so much tragedy, loss of human life. Even Elian Gonzalez himself had had a lot of violent acts in his very early life, including the drowning of his mother who was trying to bring him here to freedom in the United States. So when we look at what's happened over the last couple of years in Cuba, one would have hoped that the agreement with the United States and Cuba would have brought in and ushered in an opportunity for democracy. But what we see is that the ladies in white, damas de blancos, are being attacked even more than ever before. Dissidents even today are being taken from home to undisclosed locations. Their families are being told that if they leave their homes, they also will be arrested. And we see but that do the you like that repression there has, been, has actually increased. Yeah, but do you like that there has been an effort made uh, by the U.S. Uh, to warm relations, that these are the beginning stages, or do you believe that all of that should be, those efforts should be eradicated um, and, and start anew? Or dismantled altogether? Well, Frederica, if, if, if our position was, let's warm up to the Cuban military regime, which is still in power today, those who were in power a week ago are still in power today, then we did a super great job because they're the ones that we're doing business with. We're not doing business with the Cuban people. We're doing with the Cuban military regime the longest military dictatorship in our Western Hemisphere. So when we look at, and President-elect Donald Trump, I think is absolutely you know, correct, and looking at what is going on in Cuba, and there are concessions that should have been made and weren't made. We have American fugitives who are living free in Cuba. We don't have political freedom or religious freedom on the island. There is no movement toward democracy so, at So what all. are you seeing? And these are some of what these do you conditions. Think is, what do you think should be next? What do you think is plausible, reasonable, acceptable under a Trump administration in terms of what would be next? Well, first of all, he, uh, President-elect Trump has indicated that he's going to look at all of the executive orders and executive actions that have been taken. And there are some that may be uh, illegal in the case of Cuba in particular, when you look at uh, the expansion of banking and other issues overriding uh, the role of the embargo in this particular case. And so what needs to be done is, and he has indicated that he will do, is that he's going to review this very complex situation, and he's going to find a way to negotiate a better deal deal so okay, that it meets what, what American interests, which is to I'm have to get democracy. At that. What is a deal? Explain what you or the a better Trump deal, administration a, a better, a, a better, A better deal is one that brings about viable means of transforming, helping transform Cuba into a democracy, because it's no, you know, there's no question that Cuba mm. is an exporter of terrorism. Cuba is the one that's buttressing uh, the Venezuelan government, which is not a legitimate government any more than the Cuban government is. And you see that going on in Bolivia as well, Nicaragua, Ecuador. So it's an export. It's got a very close relationship with Hezbollah. And what we need to do is we need to try to provide support so that you can have support to the civil society so that we can help bring about means if we're going to do business with cuba it should be with the cuban people and not with the cuban military okay so so maria what are you envisioning is potentially next uh, that you look forward to or that you worry about 
Well, I worry about that Trump will just erase uh, the kind of progress we have seen by closing up diplomatic ties, which is what he has threatened to do, I think, by listening to the pressure of those in Miami-Dade who uh, absolutely don't want the United States to have any relationship with Cuba. I don't think that will happen, though, Fred, because it is really tough to put the genie back in the bottle. And the genie that I'm talking about is progress towards democracy, towards all of those things that my friend Helen was talking about. And I agree with her that we do need to, whatever we do to move forward, and we have to move forward, not backward, we have to make sure that we do pressure, continue to pressure Cuba, which is frankly the reason why President Obama made this deal in the first place, uh, to, to meet those democratic principles that we all believe is, uh, are so important to the Cuban people. But let's also be very clear, the times are a change in. 70% of the Cuban American community in Miami-Dade what supportive of this deal that Obama made with Cuba because they understand that opening up the ties with Cuba, it was really the only way to seek to continue to make progress towards real democracy. 63% of those who supported the deal also support lifting the embargo. Lifting the embargo is the only way that we can do what Helen just stated, which is incredibly important, and that is do business with the Cuban people. Such so as those the sending are all in things support that, that you I were saying, hope, Helen. Uh -huh. Those are all things that I really hope that Trump will be the one to underscore as he as he reevaluates this particular deal with Cuba. All right, we'll leave it right there, ladies. Frederica, Maria Cardona, Helen, thank you. Frank, really quick, uh, Helen. Just, just very quickly, President-elect Trump has been clear that he doesn't mind doing direct negotiations with the Cuban government. What he has said is that there have to be concessions made on the part of the Cuban government, which has not all having to do with political and religious freedoms, okay. releasing the American fugitives mm -hmm. of justice, and more. But those are like right. some of the fundamentals that need to be re given in return. Helen Let's Maria, do it. thank you so much. Thanks, Fred.